If I were to ask you, who killed Jesus? What would your response be? Perhaps you would react the same way many Christians do and say that his death was the fault of the Romans. They were the ones, after all, that pounded the spikes into his hands and feet. They were the ones that raised the cross. They were the ones that pierced his side. The Romans were responsible. Or you might be like some who have heard and maybe even believe that the responsibility lies with the Jewish people, that it's the Jewish people, in fact, that killed Jesus, and not just the ancient Jewish people that were alive at the time, but even the Jewish people today, all Jews for all time, responsible for the death of Jesus. It's called collective guilt. And it's a theology called deicide, which means the killing of God. And deicide first showed up about A.D. 167 in a tract um, that was written by a Christian leader. And in it, he said very clearly that the Jews had murdered God himself. And it used rhetoric like, he who hung the universe was himself hung on a tree. God himself has been murdered. The king of the Jews put to death by the right hand of the Jews. It shows up again in about the fourth century on the lips of a very influential church father by the name of St. John Chrysostom. He's the one who coined the phrase deicide and it became the cornerstone of his theological teaching. Eventually, deicide became entrenched in Christian theology. And that accusation has literally chased the Jewish people throughout history. Chased them through the pogroms, through the Inquisition, through the Holocaust. The accusation of Christ killer echoing throughout history. Now, was there some Jewish involvement in the death of Jesus? Yes, there was. That's clear in the scriptures. There was a group of Jewish leaders who feared for their own positions. And therefore, they wanted Yeshua gone. They wanted him killed. And so they, with their followers and the Romans, made sure that that happened. But they hardly represented all of the Jewish people in that day, not to mention all Jews of all time. And yet, that accusation throughout the millennia has been responsible for the deaths of literally millions of people, millions of people. Innocent men and women and children whose only crime is that of being Jewish. It wasn't until 1965 through Nostra Aetate that the Catholic Church actually reputed the accusation of deicide and publicized that they would no longer teach that the Jews were responsible for the death of Jesus. But it wasn't for 33 more years until 1998 that the Lutheran Church passed a similar resolution. And today, in the Eastern Christian denominations, there are some who still cling to that teaching, still cling to that belief, who speak of the murderers of God, the lawless nation of the Jews. What about in the West? What about outside of the church? Well, unfortunately, in the West, there are still those who cling to that teaching, who believe that the Jewish people even the Jewish people today bear the responsibility for the death of Jesus. And outside of the church, we hear it often. We hear it from neo-Nazi groups. We hear it from skinheads, from all kinds of radical groups, including radical Muslims shouting Christ killer to justify their own anti-Semitism. The accusation still haunting the Jewish people, so much so that it was just a couple of years ago that a Jewish friend looked at my husband and myself and said, but you do think I killed Jesus, don't you? 
what should my response have been? I think the Bible is very clear on what the truth of the matter is. You see, the Bible makes it abundantly clear that that death on the cross, that crucifixion, that, that pain, that humiliation, was the very reason that God sent his son in the first place. And I can't help but think of the pain that it must have caused God himself throughout the generations to realize that it was those that claimed to be his followers who in fact used the death of his son to justify committing murder in his name. It's unthinkable. It's horrific. It's unbelievable. And how should we respond? How did I respond to my friend? I think there's only one way that each one of us should respond. And that is to explain that Yeshua suffered the pain and the humiliation of that crucifixion willingly. He suffered it willingly. You see, he surrendered his life in exchange for mine.